security of the European Union in mind. It is one that preserves the remarkable peace and progress on the island of Ireland over the past 20 years. And I will not go into the ins and outs of the negotiations <coughs> on the divorce. This is done and dusted as far as I am concerned. Before the end of the month, I expect both the British and the European parliaments to ratify the agreement. And so in just over three weeks, on the 30, 31st of January, the UK will spend its last day as a member state. This will be a tough and emotional day. But when the sun rises again on February 1st, the European Union and the United Kingdom will still be the best of friends and partners. The bonds between us will still be unbreakable. We will still contribute to each other's societies like so many Brits have done in the European Union and as so many EU citizens do here every single day, whether as teachers or as nurses, as doctors, whether working as CEOs or in <coughs> NGOs. We will still have a lot to learn from each other. The UK is home to thriving creative and cultural sectors, to cutting at digital innovation and scientific excellence, in some of the world's best universities with brilliant minds, many of them from all across Europe, we will still share the same challenges from climate change to security. We will still be allies and like-minded partners in NATO, the United Nations and other international organizations. We will still share the same values and the belief that democracy, freedom, and the rule of law must be the foundation of our societies. We will still share the same history and geography, and whatever happens, our continent will still share the same destiny too. So as one door will unfortunately close, another one will open. And now is the time for us to look forward together. It is the time for the best and the oldest friends to build a new future together. And as only true friends can, I want to be very honest about what lies ahead of us. During the withdrawal agreement negotiation, there was always the uncertainty around whether Brexit would happen or not. It was an uncertainty that made the negotiations inevitably tense. This fresh negotiation ahead of us will take place against the backdrop of clarity and mutual interest in making it work. The European Union is ready to negotiate a truly ambitious and comprehensive new partnership with the United Kingdom. We will make as much as we can. We will go as far as we can, but the truth is that our partnership cannot and will not be the same as before. And it cannot and will not be as close as before, because with every choice comes a consequence. With every decision comes a trade-off. Without the free movement of people, you cannot have the free movement of capital <coughs> goods and services. Without a level playing field on environment, labor, taxation and state aid, you cannot have the highest quality access to the world's largest single market. The more divergence there is, the more distant the partnership will be. And without an extension of the transition period beyond 2020, you cannot ex expect to agree on every single aspect of our new partnership. We will have to prioritize. The European Union's objective in the negotiations are clear. We will work for solutions that uphold the integrity of the European Union, its single market, 
and its customs union. There can be no compromise on that. But we are ready to design a new partnership with zero tariffs, zero quotas, zero dumping, a partnership that goes well beyond trade and it is unprecedented in scope. Everything from climate action to data protection, fisheries, energy, transport, space, financial services and to security and we are ready to work day and night to get as much done within the time frame we have. None of this means that it will be easy. But we start this negotiation from a position of certainty, goodwill, shared interests and purpose. And we should be optimistic. We need to be optimistic. We need to be optimistic for those young people leaving school in the next years who want to study and learn abroad. We need to be optimistic and we need to look to how British and European researchers could work together to find solutions of our most pressing challenges and to develop the new technologies the world does really need. And we must ensure that we continue to work together on upholding peace and security in Europe and around the world. We must build a new comprehensive security partnership to fight cross-border threats ranging from terrorism to cybersecurity to counterintelligence. Events in recent years in Salisbury, Manchester, London and all across Europe have underlined the need for us to work together on mutual security. The threat of terrorism is real and we have to share the necessary information and intelligence between the European Union and the United Kingdom to stop terrorists from crossing borders and attacking our way of life. The nature of today's threats means that no one can deal with these challenges on its own. This is even more true for foreign policies as we see today, even though Britain will be outside the European decision-making structures, there will be plenty of need for common responses to address foreign security and development challenges near and far, be it in our immediate neighborhood in the East and South, or in the Horn of Africa, Sahel, Sub-Saharan Africa, or be it in wider Middle East or different parts of Latin America or Asia. The truth is that Brexit will not resolve any of the existing challenges for the European Union nor for the UK. And even being a part and not bound in the treaties, it will require intensive cooperation on our foreign and security policies. That's essential. That's essential because we share so much <coughs> experience and because we share so many of the same values, we have to uphold these values, not only when it's easy, but above all, when it's hard. Dear friends, as we embark on this new partnership with the United Kingdom, the European Union must also continue to forge its own path in today's world. One consequence of the Brexit vote has been to strengthen the unity and the faith in Europe as a project for the common good. The truth is that Brexit has highlighted the value of being together in today's ever more unsettled world. It reaffirmed our collective belief that we can do more when we do it together. Individually, the nations of Europe are becoming smaller and less influential on the world scale. In 1950, before the Union was formed, the United Kingdom, Italy and Germany were among the ten most populous countries in the world, 1950. Today, only one lifespan later, only one of those is in the top 20. 
And while Europe's population is set to decline by the end of the century, Africa's alone will grow by more than 3 billion. At the same time, new economies are emerging, and old partners are retreating back to their own path, and we face change and new challenges ahead of us. Climate change, for example. If there is one area where the world needs our leadership, it is on protecting our climate. It is existential for Europe and for the whole world. Last month, month we launched the European Green Deal. The European Green Deal is not only about emissions, it's also about emissions, but not only about emissions. It's about boosting innovation. It's about clean technologies. It's about green financing. It's about quality food. It's about modern mobility. The European Green Deal is our new growth strategy, and it will create new businesses and markets in Europe and across the world. The novelty and the difference is that we will and can foster a growth model that is cons not consuming or extracting, but one that gives back more to the planet than it takes away from the planet. Great Britain is as dedicated as the European Union when it comes to addressing climate change and taking global leadership. A whole continent has to mobilize, and the whole world needs to be part of this transformation. The European Green Deal won't happen overnight, and it will be demanding, and no country can hope to handle climate change alone. But if this is the right thing to do, and if we do it together, we can lead the change. Dear students, over the next months and years, we will have to loosen some of the threads which have been carefully stitched together between the European Union and the United Kingdom over five decades. And as we do so, we will have to work hard to weave together a new way forward. I say this because Brexit does not only mark the end of something. On the contrary, it also marks a new phase in an enduring partnership and friendship. It will be a partnership for your generation. And I count on you all to make it a success. You can choose collaboration over isolation. You can shape your continent's dis destiny. You can hold your governments accountable. You can refuse to be satisfied with the status quo. And you can turn things into how they should be. I know the last few years have been difficult and divisive. I hope that by being constructive and ambitious in the upcoming negotiation, we can all move forward together.